morning, everybody. I'm really so grateful to be here with you all, and I feel so comfortable being here with you all because I think if I have an accident, you'll all understand. <laughs> so, I'm Anya, and I'd like to think of myself as the face of adolescent incontinence. When I was a child, I always thought I wanted to be well known for something, and I never really thought that I'd be well known for being an incontinent young person. But anyway, my story of incontinence started at birth. So I was born with a condition called bacterial dissociation, and how that linked into my incontinence was a condition called cloaca. So I'm sorry for all the doctors in the house for my poorly drawn diagram, but cloaca was where the intestine, bladder, and vagina joined into one common channel that then comes out of your body. So when I was born, I had a colostomy in the mesocostomy, and at seven months, I had a full pelvic reconstruction. What the pelvic reconstruction meant for me was that I didn't have an anal sphincter, I didn't have anal muscles, I didn't have the right nerves. Um, I'm also missing bones in my sacrum, so I really didn't have the right nerves, and didn't even have a rectum to hold things in. So basically my bowel is like a tap that's constantly turned on that just keeps flowing unless there's some sort of intervention. So with that in mind, I've been incontinent ever since my pelvic reconstruction at seven months. So you think with that diagnosis, I will know that I'm incontinent. But I thought we'd play a little game, and I've got A, B, and C, and I want you to tell me when do you think that I realised I was incontinent? So who thinks I realised that A? When I was young, having accidents in the playground. What about B? High school. No one else was having accidents by that stage. It was just me. And C. Who thinks I realised that C? Well, the fact of the matter is, despite being a uh, self-proclaimed intelligent woman, um, I only realised when I was about 17, 18 that I was actually incontinent. Because I'd always known that I had no bowel control, that no one ever said to me, I knew you're incontinent. And for that reason, I was never able to seek the right help. I didn't get in contact with the Continence Foundation because I didn't even know that I had a problem with continence. I just knew that I had a problem with controlling my bowel. So it wouldn't be a presentation about incontinence at a continence conference without my favourite story of having an accident. So when I was um, 18, I was walking for Maya, and I was so excited. Big show, um, everything was great. And two weeks before that, I decided to become a vegan. And unfortunately, my body didn't agree with veganism quite as well as I thought it would. And I just started having really bad gastro symptoms. And I went to my doctor and I said, what way, or what can I do to guarantee that I do not have an accident when I get up on that runway? Because I had two weekends in a row of runways. And she said to me, the only thing you can do to guarantee that you do not have an accident on that runway is to stop eating. And I think she meant that as a joke, but the next two weeks I was on Powerade only. I thought this is the only way that I can guarantee it. So I got through the first weekend of fashion shows and it was fine, and by midway through the second week I was very hungry. And so my mom said, come on, have some brown rice, you know, just little bits and pieces. And I was keeping it all in and I thought, okay, I'll be good for the next fashion show. Now at the next fashion show, I had a sandwich at lunch with all the other models. And then walked for Maya, got off stage, was waiting to do the finale walk. And I felt something drip onto my leg. I thought, seriously, this convention center really needs to fix the air conditioners. They're just dripping everywhere. And then I looked down at my leg and I could smell that horrible smell that you know that something's gone wrong. And I realised I'd had an accident right there and they were trying to push me back on stage and I knew it was all down my legs by that point because the only warning I get is when it's on my legs and I can't really feel it otherwise. So I quickly ran down the stairs to the bathroom and it was just one toilet cubicle with all the male models waiting outside it. So I just waved, quickly went in, had to throw away the new G-string, which is the model's basic essential. Um, and then get cleaned up, run back upstairs, get on a new one, and get into swimwear. As you can see, um, it's a lot more modest at the front than it was at the back, so it was a huge risk that I was taking. And I just had to keep going. I made my mind up in that moment that I just had to persist through it. There's no way that I really wanted to get back up on that runway, but I thought that I didn't really have much of a choice. You know, I've committed to the show, and I need to keep going. So I kept going through all of those looks after having an accident, and after the lemon number, I had another one, so I did have to go home. So after that, after 
realizing that I was actually a continent. I got in touch with the Continents Foundation and I decided that I wanted to get my story out there. Even though it's something that some people think you should be embarrassed about, I thought it was about time that I started to speak up. You know, I was able to do fashion week overseas. I was able to achieve a lot of my goals that I wasn't sure that I would be able to achieve. So I thought it was time to start sharing my story. And they were really wonderful. And they put me on the cover of the British magazine. And I was and I became their UK ambassador, representing the one in 50 teenagers who have experienced incontinence, which is a horrifically high number, and it's a number that you do not hear about often. So some of the things that I got to know the Continents Foundation for, and some of the things that you may know the Continents Foundation for, is that incontinence is a common problem, but it is not normal. That it's preventable, it's treatable, even though it isn't preventable and treatable for me, it is for many others. And that there are actual continence professionals and products, like all of you in this room. I didn't know that you existed until maybe two years ago, at the earliest. And there's so much help that I could have got in that time from all of you and from the Continence Foundation that I missed out on in my youth. I also found out about the website, about the helpline, and I just thought this is an incredible foundation that I wish I knew about sooner. But what the Continents Foundation brought to me was something else, really. And I put it into a CFA. So the Continents Foundation helped me be courageous. And I think that's the perfect image of being courageous is someone with people with continents wearing a tiny black bikini on stage. So the Continents Foundation taught me, as well as the other things in my life, but the Continents Foundation really reinforced to me that I have to live my life to the fullest. And I can't just live in fear that I'm going to have an accident or live by my toilet. And it doesn't have to limit me that I'm incontinent. So I thought, as a UK ambassador, if I'm telling everybody else that they have to live their life and they can't let their incontinence stop them, how can I let it stop me? The Continence Foundation also taught me to be fearless. So to represent the incontinence community without the fear of the what will people think, which is a huge fear, I think, for anyone that's incontinent. And I really got through these barriers because I knew that I'd always have the Continence Foundation support and guidance and nurturing and that if anything bad happened, if anyone said anything bad, I had this huge foundation behind me that was backing me. So up there I've got some of the articles that I've been in since um, getting in touch with the Continence Foundation. So Mamma Mia, Nine Honey, The Daily Mail, The Independent UK, all with the title despite all my achievements and everything else about the mobile control. So now, when everyone who wants to date me or know me or anything Googles my name, they found out pretty quickly that I'm incontinent. But so many a lot of other people that are incontinent too. I've had men in the UK, um, in the army that have experienced incontinence and have never talked about it before reached out to me. I've had mothers of multiple children reach out to me that have experienced incontinence. I've had young teenagers, I've had everybody no matter their age or their race or their disability or non-disability, they've been able to reach out and empathize with the story. And I think it's so important to have these personal stories out there. The Constance Foundation also taught me, taught me sorry, to be authentic. So to accept myself, my body, and my conscience is something to be proud of and not something to be ashamed of. Even though I thought that I accepted myself and I accepted my body before getting in touch with the Continence Foundation, they really taught me that there shouldn't be a stigma around incontinence and it is not something that you should be ashamed of. So, happy birthday, happy 30th birthday to the Continence Foundation. You've changed my life and you've changed many, many others. Thank you so much.